we bacteria display different behaviors when present at low and high concentrations. With special group behaviors activated only at high cell density, we demonstrate the organization that allows us to achieve tasks impossible for a single microorganism, like overcoming an enormous host in a pathogenic invasion. This phenomenon is made possible thanks to quorum sensing. The mechanism behind quorum sensing is the production, release, and detection of autoinducers, a kind of chemical signal molecule. As our density increases, so does the concentration of the autoinducer. Once a threshold concentration is reached, a so-called quorum, we all commence our group behaviors in synchrony. In addition, there is both intra- and interspecies density recognition. Since we typically live in communities with many species, it is important to know not only how many bacteria of our own species are present, but also how many bacteria are present in total. Hence, there are both generic and species-specific autoinducers, and we have numerous receptors specific to these molecules. Let's look at an example of group behavior. Vibrio fisheri have a symbiotic relationship with the Hawaiian bobtail squid. By producing light, we allow the squid to not cast a shadow, confusing its predators and prey. We are found in high numbers in the squid's light organ at night. When the squid pumps a large portion of us out during the day, in order to prevent a growing mass of dead bacteria building up inside it, we are present at low density in the seawater. There's no point for us to invest resources into making light when we are so spread out. No one would see it anyway, so we stop. But how do we know when we are present in sufficient numbers for our bioluminescence to make a visual impact? We do this via the Lux system. When the bacteria are at low density, the Lux genes don't get expressed much, so there are only low basal levels of the Lux proteins. Most importantly, Lux I and the regulatory molecule Lux R. Lux I synthesizes the autoinducer, which diffuses out uselessly into the seawater. Lux R waits in vain to bind the autoinducer, and no light is produced. However, inside the light organ of the Hawaiian bobtail squid, we have a party. With such a high density of bacteria, the autoinducer builds up enough to re-enter the bacteria. It then forms a complex with Lux R, which goes and binds the operon of the Lux system, activates transcription, and causes tons and tons of Lux proteins to be made. The Lux A and Lux B genes produce proteins that together create the enzyme luciferase. Luciferase catalyzes a redox reaction that produces blue-green light, and that's how you get the bioluminescence. Of course, activating transcription also means that there is now more Lux I and more Lux R, so concentrations of autoinducer spiral even higher, resulting in more and more light. If you liked our video and would like to see more, please like and subscribe!